Vintage Magnavox Consolette Stereo. I think this is uh, pre-Astrosonic. And I believe this might have come out of the same dwelling as this thing. And if so, this is going to have pounds and pounds of cigarette glaze and paste and pralines. Anyway, the objective of this video uh, is just to get this to work. Um, it's got the civil defense markings there. So, uh, the gentleman that found this and brought this to me uh, thinks that he can get um, a decent amount of money for this. And I, it, working, I kind of don't doubt it because in Los Angeles here, people will actually pay for this mid-century modern stuff. Like this MCM stuff will... Yeah, three to five hundred dollars working. I could see that definitely. Now a lot of vintage collectors are shaking their head, but this is Los Angeles, and people have money out here, and mid-century modern stuff is popular. You get a, a you know, a 1950s, 1960s era house that is pretty original. It's actually more chic to restore it now to that era than it is to tear it down and build a new cardboard box so let's plug it in I just wish they would do that with the pre-war houses because I I think the pre-war homes are actually much more desirable tuning Richard Pryor said, you don't get old being no doggone fool. He didn't say it like that, but that's how I'm seeing it. <laughs> Pay attention. Looks like I have more music than I have time. It's been yesterday's music for today's memories and the soundtrack of my life. Here. What do you say? It's waking up very slowly. Scrap with the masses when the news breaks. Instead, prepare today for what's coming. Go to mypatriotsupply.com. It's always something to be bullish about. The 15th south of Rainbow Valley. All lanes are closed for an accident investigation and slow from Winchester Road. Hamilton, written by Lynn Manuel Miranda. Hamilton is coming to the Hollywood. Of course, when you get on KNX, it wants to blow you out of the building. Beginning August 17th. Get to wow, it actually has stereo multiplex. Really? Nothing. But life is a journey. Nothing but okay. Well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So 
where's Fono? You put it on. It's actually feels like it's got a styli on it. Oh yeah. Listen to that precision. Ooh, custom. You know what? He said the turntable worked. I hear nothing. Let me get the back off. It has a built-in FM antenna. Look at this. This wires the FM antenna. And it looks like we have um, cigarette infused termite droppings and cigarette infused spider webs. In fact, where's my phone? We need to queue up a, a, a Marlboro clip here. A masculine image. So well defined that today the cowboy is synonymous with Marlboro. And Marlboro country has become a part of the American idiom. And when you add music to the cowboy image, there's no doubt about it. You are in Marlboro country. Yes, we are in Marlboro country. Look at the cigarette-infused spider webs with the nicotine tar glaze. The wires all sticky. Look at this. Look at that. After a millennial or a Gen Z gets this thing, it's going to be all TH, THC uh, marijuana tar. Use this thing as a bong. Okay, interesting. You put it on stereo and that's the phonograph. We're going to do a little clean and lubricate to this, and I mean just the bare minimum. Well, let's get the RPM. Where's my telephono? Okay, let's see. <laughs> ah. Ah, you have to... No, 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 you will comply. So actually, not too bad considering the crusty grindy factor. I think I'm going to pop this on here and some will get the reference to this year's EOL which was actually Chris's idea. I gotta give Chris credit for suggesting this track because yeah well let's we'll see what happens. Oh yeah. Okay, hey, this 
this is really dry. This sound is where the sound is coming from though. motor seems okay so I cleaned this all off with a little brake cleaner and there's actually quite a bit of lash there so I think what I'm gonna do is you usually use oil on this I think I'm gonna use some of the lighter hydrocarbon grease for a uh, proper restore video on these either radio TV phono nut or Jordan Pier highly recommended they tear them all apart and do them right this is just a quick and dirty let's get it to work and uh, get a millennial to buy it kind of thing try and get just a little bit right off the top here this is still kind of thick but you know what thick as popular today and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and pack this Again, thick. Oh yeah. And we'll put a little bit on the top and on the shaft. Gotta always lubricate the shaft. Big difference a little grease makes. The tire is just really hard. I tried cleaning it, but it's just not not getting enough traction. Yeah, that rubber wheel is just too hard. You know, someone should start a business machining those on a lathe and putting an O-ring on it. Yeah, it needs a new wheel. Yeah, that's that's terrible. It's terrible. This does not sound like it's in stereo to me either. This record is in wide stereo. And I would hear it and I don't hear it. Yeah, if you listen to that, the trumpet should be in one channel and the piano should be in the other. The trumpet is missing. One whole channel's missing. Okay, only, only the black is doing anything. What's going on here? It's like a wiring issue. Cigarette, cigarette glaze.
here's what I want right here. Yeah, something here I don't think is hooked up right. This is Nastacular from Amp, and then that speaker there goes through. Okay, I'll get into the stereo thing in a minute. I want to first pull a couple of these chassis out and see what kind of capacitors these have in them. Uh, if they're paper capacitors, like straight wax paper capacitors, I got to think about what I want to do if I want to uh, change some of the uh, grid coupling capacitors that could leak and cause the tubes to fail. Or, yeah, let me get this out. We'll discuss that. So surprisingly, and quite a happy discovery, is that... Wonder what wonder what that switch is for right there. Is that a balance control pot? Um, it's all disc capacitors. It's all disc capacitors, which is a pleasant surprise because I don't have to touch this. There's another pot right there. Electrolytics and no humming, and they're not getting hot, so may as well just wait until they short and cremate the power transformer. Start a fire. The tuner chassis looks like it's in those pegs there. I think it lifts out the top. Let's pull it out and check it out. Okay, um, same thing. It's all couplets and. Is that a black beauty right there? Couplets and disc capacitors. Okay. So there's a circuit board under here with the IF stuff on it. We have a filter here. The odor is atrocious. It looks like we have one possible capacitor there. I'm not let me inspect. And here's a couple that should probably go. There's a, a good all and one of those white paper and ceramic. But you know what? They are probably so marinated in cigarette glaze that they are, are not leaky. It looks like we had FM MPX out and in, so this did not have the multiplex stereo decoder option or was built prior to that. I'm going to spray all these controls. Yeah, I drive that every day. Um, look at it. And it's similar in size. It's a great car. It's got a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. And you get three years of free maintenance. And I'm talking about the Dave Sonata. It's a it's just a great driving car. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. So why is everything coming out of here only on one channel? So I'm grounding out both channels, uh, right? Is just a great car. This is like left. And this is right. And left is everything. Both channels are coming through left. So, what's going on? Is that going into the amp like that, or coming out of the amp? Or these are the wires going into the amp. Everybody that I talk to just loves the way it looks, and the people that I've helped get it, which. So that channel is not working. Uh, everybody I've helped get one absolutely loves it. You sound hesitant. Did you have something? Uh, no, I just... I was in a car business a long time ago, back when... Back when Datsuns were... Back when Datsuns were Nissans. Yeah, and yeah. They are the other way around. Yeah, Nissans were Datsuns. So what's going on here? Where's the wiring issue? I worked for our car away for a little bit. And, uh... 
Ten minutes on the five, okay, Frederick Smith. Trouble in the Atwater Village on the northbound side of the five. Is it this balance pot that's the issue? What the? Because. Coming out of the east. South. Well, it's not coming out of the preamp even on both channels, and it's not coming out of the amp on both channels. Wow, that's hot. So one channel of the amp is not working and one channel is not coming out of the preamp because I can bridge it together here and it starts working. Okay, so we got our input here comes through two 100Ks to the volume control which will pull the ground either side then through two 47 K's to the 12 AX7 then out of the 12 AX7 to the 6 BQ5's. It's the most simple damn circuit. Looking to sell your valuable coins, I enjoy So Let me do this. This is the working channel, right? That's a lot of miles, and for good reason. Coins, jewelry. So is it just the damn resistor is open? Tangible. I've been dealing with tangible 20 years. What are the odds of that? Visit United Public. Okay, what's going on here? God, this is confusing. Dan Covert at Covert Ford is picked a man named Mark. So this is the channel that's not working here. I got that backwards. It's not it's not easy when you're squatting down. Okay, so this this channel. This is one channel, this is the other channel. It's just a single ended. So is a output transformer open? Okay, well, looking at the plate as this tube heats up, the plate just drops from 270 volts and it keeps dropping. So this is a gassy tube. But I don't think that's the only problem because when I touch that, I don't get any noise from the speaker, nothing. Okay, I found the problem. I'm really... Th this right here was on... It was on the wrong thing, so it was only... One channel was broken in that switch because it runs it in series through the outside speaker. Well, this is confusing. But this tube is gassy because that's the grid voltage, the control grid voltage, 
after it warmed up. So that tube is bad. Okay, this is the other tube I put in there and the, the uh, control grid voltage stays at uh, 0 0.05. So this tube is bad. So I'll get a replacement for that. We'll use a, a Russian tube, but let's see. Again, laying on the ground is so difficult. So where am I losing my... Where am I losing my channel here? This still is not right. This channel still is not right. It's not loud and clear. Okay, I think we got an open 220K resistor here that feeds the plate of the 12AX7. I only got 800 millivolts. 0.8. So on this side, I've got 261 volts. On the other channel, on the plate, I got... It's tough to get connection through all this cigarette glaze. It's like impossible. It's like 32 volts on that plate and 0.8 on this one. That's just the resistance through the meter. I'm just measuring the voltage across that open resistor. This is a 6P14 and 6P14P and this is a direct Russian drop-in for a 6BQ5. I walked away to get this and a 220K resistor and I came back and the tuner died. Okay, with our new 1% 220K resistor in, we have now 105 volts on that plate and now on the other plate we have 20 volts. So both of the 220K resistors are bad. This one is just extra bad. But now we got stereo left and right working out of the amp. That's that side. That's this side. And of course now this side has lower gain because the other 220K resistor is roached. So, but now the tuner crapped out on me. What, what? This thing suffering resistor? What happened here? So the way this is behaving, it's like the black wire is shorted internally. Because when I plug it into the amp, the amp stops humming and hissing. And I get nothing on this end through the black. So on the green, the green connecting cable, this coax here, or shielded wire, on the green I get uh, 200K. On the black to ground, I get zero ohms. So the black is shorted. So I've narrowed, I've like narrowed down all the problems, bad resistors and a bad tube here. But where did our sound go? Why did the amps or the tuner stop working? Okay, so this tube right here is the audio amp. Well, they just call it audio amp. And I'm measuring the plate load resistors on this, 470K. On this one, I got 0.7 volts on that side. And on the other side, what the hell are all the resistors going open in this? On this one, I got 235 volts. So that sucker went open. Let me bridge my meter across that. Skinny little. 
So when I walked away, it was working to get this 220K resistor. When I, while I was gone, the 470K went open. The resistors are all going open on this thing. So yeah, literally the meter is like a 10 meg resistor. When I put the meter across the open resistor, it gives the tube just enough power. So let me see if I can find the short in the wire. A little rough year, but you know what? Um, those garage floors just make you happy, and a lot of people, you know, upgrading kitchens and bathrooms and uh, landscaping. So I know that's one of the trends that you're seeing. It's just been like I'd say if we, if we were only allowed to bring up one thing and we weren't allowed to say home improvements or credit card debts, I think you always got to make Jessica a little red. She's one of my favorites. She's on on my team, so I always have fun with her. She sits two seats over to me when we're in the office. And one thing about her, she can't drive. She, she her. Yep. Yep, now it's in stereo. Yep, now it's working. Okay. Oh, that was good. Ruined my good record. Crap. Need to keep it out of the sun anyway. So this is a trip. The plate load resistors are going open right in front of me. So I'm going to run to the parts house and pick up some resistors. I actually have quite a stash of resistors, but they're all the old military 1% ones. And I don't know if they're quite, quite rated for this high a voltage drop across them. I mean, some of these got 250 volts drop across them, so I'd rather just get some new uh, carbon film or whatever they have now, carbon oxide. Yeah, first time I've ever used yoga mats to repair something, and it's different laying down, working on stuff, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So we replaced the two 220K resistors that feed the plates of the 12AX7 audio driver that drives the six BQ-5 audio outputs. I replaced the two 470K that feed the audio amp. Uh, this is like the preamp, the other one's a driver. I don't know, what do they call it here? Well, they don't. They got the 12AX7 there and they got the, the uh, 6EU7 audio amp. So, Here's the bad tube. And the best way to test these 6BQ5s, they always seem to get gassy and leaky, is to really watch your plate voltage and your cathode voltage. Here's the two 470s, here's the two 220s. I found these resistors in my stash. Gardena, made in Gardena. 1%, they're still within 1%. So this 470 measures 690. The other 470 is open. This 220 is open. The other 220 is 3.6 megs. So yeah, these resistors are bad and they're going bad as I run the thing. Um, I went through and checked the rest of them and the amp and they're all a little high, but they're not open or way out. They're probably within 30% or so. Um, this, I can't get to a bunch of them because they're on that circuit board uh, in the IF under a can. So I'll just have to run it and see what happens. Okay, yeah, let's do some voltage checks. Uh, plate 1, 12AX7, 105. Plate 2, 106. That's pretty good. Let's come over here. Plate one. 
trends continue, our oceans could contain more plastic than fish by 2050. Oh, that's cool. Purchase items made from renewable... Uh, 99 volts. And 106 volts. Wow, that's a little bit different, isn't it? I mean, not much, but... I measured the resistors. They're identical. It must just be the tube. I'm measuring the two plates of the 6BQ5s and the Russian 6P14 is 254 and the other original Magnavox tube is 244 and I'm going to watch that for a while because sometimes these things take 10 minutes before you tell that they're bad. This would test good, but if I put it in here, it'll load the plate down to 100 volts, 150 volts, and it'll get so damn hot, because it's got grid emission when it gets hot. Okay, it seems to be stable, about 244 volts, so I'm going to say the output tubes are okay. In, in minutes. If you have chronic knee pain, attend a special knee pain lunch and learn seminar and learn how this new laser stem cell treatment can give your old knees new life and start you living pain free. Grab your cell phone, be the, one of the next 27 callers, and the knee pain lunch seminar is free. So dial pound 250 and say knee pain and you'll be connected on your cell phone. Just dial pound 250 and say knee pain and you get the education that we're, we're only on the air for an hour. So we can give you uh, bullet points as to the truth in the middle of the night. I don't let you miss me as I put it down like So all the way at the bottom is about 90.1, way off. Where are the waves? Sometimes the snow. That should be up here. Probably should have checked that before I put it back together. I could have tweaked the FM oscillator. Okay, there's two resist. There's two. Let me see if I can turn those and tweak it, speed it up. Okay, I tried turning those and they made no difference except for when I touch them. This is permeability tuned. So all the way up is not high enough, or not low enough. So the way this works is that coils around there as you tune it. All I was supposed to do is just get it working, and I've got it working. It sounds good. The FM sensitivity, the FM alignment is off or something's off in the FM. Um, so the FM sensitivity is not great. It's only, you know, on the strongest stations it's really loud and clear. But it's in, it's in stereo now, not stereo on the, the uh, AM FM radio but stereo on the phonograph it sounds good it sounds full it doesn't really have as much bass I mean I would expect this thing to boom it, it just doesn't it just it, you know it doesn't get out of its way power wise it's, it's a slug So it's been running for the better part of eight hours since I put those resistors in it. 
and nothing else has failed and it's still even on both channels. So I'm going to call it good. Very interesting to have a bunch of resistor failures, but I've seen it before on Packard Bell.